Hello, my name is Christine Conrado Staskowitz. I'm the president of the Conrado Consulting Group, and today I'm going to talk about why you should surround yourself with strong people. Um, what I call the emperor's new clothes. Do you know the Hans Christian Andersen story about the emperor's new clothes? For those of you who don't, very quickly I'm going to review that it's a story about an emperor who is vain and extravagant and buying clothes that are only the best. Two swindlers come to the kingdom and convince the emperor that they make the best clothing for the best clients. They tell the emperor the cloth they use will appear invisible to anyone who is stupid or incompetent. The swindlers bring the emperor the magical clothing. The emperor won't admit that he can't see the clothing because he doesn't want to appear stupid or incompetent. The guards and other people at court won't admit they can't see the clothing either because they don't want to appear stupid or incompetent. The emperor marches in a parade in what appears to be his underclothes. No one is brave enough to tell him he's in his underclothes until he crosses paths with a child who asks him why he's marching around in his underclothes. The moral of the story is, most of us have heard this story of the emperor's new clothes and how people conform to an idea they don't believe in order to stay in the emperor's good graces. It's kind of like you go to a party and there are people there that have um, different beliefs from you and instead of being quiet you want to appear that you're part of the group so that people will like you if you want to grow and improve you need to hire people who will challenge your ideas and make you think no matter how experienced or smart we are we base our decisions on our successes and failures, and everyone has different successes in life and failures, and those things shape their ideas. So if we work with people who approach things differently based on their successes and failures, um, they have a different background and experience, they can bring a lot to the table. Here are a few tips to help you create an open and safe environment for your team. When you interview candidates, ask them STAR method interview questions that will provide insight into the candidate's critical thinking abilities, how they work under pressure, and how they handle competing ideas among teammates or even with their manager. Some people get upset if you don't listen to them. Uh, they just don't handle it very well and they make everyone uncomfortable and they kind of throw a temper tantrum and you want to stay away from those people just as much as you want to stay away from people who just go along to get along. Here's some questions um, that you can ask that follow the STAR method for interviewing that will help you gain the insight that you're looking for. So tell me about a time when you used out of the box thinking to solve a problem, maybe save the company money or stream, streamline a process. This is one of my standard questions. I, I love this question. Tell me about what you did when you discovered one of your teammates or your manager made a mistake. You know, did you quietly fix it and maybe document it? Did you run tell the person that they made a, a mess and that you know they've got pudding for brains? You know, how did you handle it? Tell me how you would handle your manager or teammate asking you to cut corners or to tell a lie. Now, sometimes people, I, I have a reputation for speaking up and talking about you know doing the right thing versus doing the easy thing, and and sometimes. It doesn't really get me into trouble, but it doesn't really make me very popular either. So you have to be diplomatic about things. I've learned that over time. Um, tell me about a time when you didn't see eye to eye with your manager. You know, did you get into a screaming fight? Did you write them uh, maybe an unprofessional email? Did you take them aside and privately discuss your comparison and contrast to their ideas and maybe you guys come up with something completely different together. Be open minded. Being open minded to other people's suggestions really can open the door to 
you know, brainstorming sessions and brainstorming sessions can be very beneficial to your team. If people feel safe, then they're going to speak up. So sometimes companies put out a suggestion box to give people a voice or what I prefer to call a solution box where people can submit ideas to solve problems. And sometimes they're thinking farther ahead than other people are. They see a problem that's coming and they can present a solution with the problem. And I think that that is becoming more and more po popular. Don't just come and tell me what the problem is. I want to hear about a solution as well. It might be that we don't go with that solution. It might start some brainstorming. Your team will become more engaged and empowered if you're open minded. Um, engaging and empowering your team members will make your team stronger. People are more passionate about what they do when they feel engaged and empowered to do their best work. People want to be heard and they want to contribute to the success of the team. Um, you got to try to stay away from doting too much on any one person, even if they are the superstar of the team. If people start feeling like it's a competition and that they're not getting heard, then that can really damage your morale. Delegating responsibilities also shows that you have confidence in your team members. So delegating is important. Um, I had a mentor who commented to me that he used to, you know, insist that, you know, I'm the boss, we're going to do things my way. And he realized at one point that he wasn't always the smartest person in the room. And once he became open to listening to other people's ideas, he was pleasantly surprised by the great ideas his employees had, and that by listening to his subordinates, he engaged and empowered them. They became more passionate about their work, and they also became more proactive. Don't micromanage. When I ask candidates what their biggest pet peeves are, one thing that I hear more than anything else is they don't want to be micromanaged. You know, if you don't have the confidence to let somebody do their job without going back and checking everything that they do, then why did you hire them? You know, you have to have confidence in your abilities to hire the right people and manage them in a way that they're going to do their work. When you're micromanaging people, you're sending a signal that you are very insecure about your position and your abilities. So micromanagement conveys distrust, disrespect, and a lack of confidence in your own authority and your own abilities to manage your team. If you create a safe place for people to work, they become more engaged, productive, and passionate. You want to create a structure and accountability for your team and for yourself. So what I mean by structure is there needs to be some process involved. If someone finds a problem, you know, how did they address it? And a lot of times that depends on the severity of the problem. If it's something pretty small, it's not really going to affect anything. Um, it just might um, be a procedural thing. You might not have to like go to your superior or another team member for advice or for uh, direction. If it's a bigger problem that could cause even bigger problems down the line, then they need to know who they should talk to about what kind of problems. So you need to put that structure in place. And there needs to be some accountability. If you find there's a problem with something and you don't report it, there needs to be some accountability for that. There aren't enough hours in the day to do everyone else's job and yours. And when you micromanage, you're basically doing everything all over again for the people on your team. So you're gonna be working yourself to a frazzle. If you micromanage your team, you're gonna damage morale. You're gonna create an environment that feels unsafe. People who don't feel safe at work don't meet their full potential. And it, it robs them of their passion and desire to do a good job. You know, if you're going to just go behind me on everything that I do, then, you know, why am I going to bust my butt? You're going to nitpick it anyway. Managers who micromanage 
burn out faster and are more stressed out than managers who delegate responsibilities and trust their employees. So trusting your employees doesn't mean you never check in on them. You never, you know, review their work. It just means that you check in from time to time. You let them know that you're there for them if they have a problem and that it's okay for them to speak up. You wanna encourage your employees. You wanna create an environment where people feel safe to ask questions, present competing ideas, and think outside the box. If you shut people down in the meeting just because you wanna keep it short, and you're not really addressing real problems, then the meetings become useless. So only have meetings when a meeting is necessary. And then you'll have the time that you need to address the problems at hand. You know, sometimes teams or departments will have a daily meeting and basically they're just rehashing the same thing all the time, maybe it's time to break it down to three times a week or every Tuesday and Thursday, or people can call a meeting when it's necessary. You have to look at that and figure out what environment and structure works the best for you. Be wary of yes men or sycophants. If someone's always telling you what they think you want to hear, you may never know the truth of the matter allowing boot licking, brown nosing, or butt kissing behaviors will damage morale, your productivity, and your reputation as a manager. Don't acknowledge these behaviors and seek the counsel of people who are diplomatic, pragmatic, and honest. I mean, you don't want somebody who is, you know, just shooting their mouth off all the time, talking about everybody's making mistakes and, you know, they're great, wonderful, and you never see me doing that. You want people who, are diplomatic about things. And also you want people who don't suffer from what I call chicken little syndrome, where the sky is always falling and we're all gonna die. Make it clear that you want to know the ugly truth. You don't wanna hear a pretty lie. You can't build a solid foundation unless you have the facts and you shouldn't make decisions based on incorrect information. So in summary, if you surround yourself with people who tell you what you want to hear or what they think will keep them in your good graces or who agree with your ideas just because they're your ideas and you're the boss, you will end up being the emperor without any clothes and no one brave enough to tell you you're naked. So I hope this information is helpful. I thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please email me or call me at the email and phone number on the screen. You can also visit our website, conradoconsulting.com, if you'd like to know more about the services that we offer to our clients and candidates. Thank you, good luck, and goodbye.